Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to worship at Grace Lutheran Church, whether you are joining us in person or online to recognize uh, Maundy Thursday. And uh, in comparison and reflection to last year, it's a whole lot nicer to have some of you uh, in front of me today. So uh, I'm very, very thankful for that. Um, my name is Landon Martin. I'm one of the pastors here, and I'll be uh, leading worship along with uh, Pastor Yoon and two of our elders, Wayne and Vern and uh, a variety of uh, really wonderful musical talent tonight. Uh, tonight, we, we stand right in the kind of the middle of the theme of Holy Week. If, uh, if we've done our jobs right, and if you've uh, perhaps been joining us the last couple of days, the themes will draw you right to where we sit, where we see uh, the Lord Jesus and His disciples setting up and remembering the Passover and, uh, and then ultimately, Jesus going to the Garden of Gethsemane where he'll be betrayed. So uh, that's the theme that's before us tonight. And, and while we walk through this together, we remember uh, what the, the shedding of the Lord's blood means for you and for me, that eternal and complete and absolute sacrifice for all of our sins, that 
uh, that action that opens eternity to every single one of us, and, uh, and also the, the personal nature of Jesus that opens up with his sacrifice for us. Uh, Maundy Thursday is unique in that it begins three days that kind of comprise one service. So uh, tonight is essentially the beginning of uh, the kind of the thick of the passion narrative. And so tomorrow night, there's no invocation, there's no benediction, it's right in the middle of things, and the story isn't ended. And then uh, on Easter Sunday, we will uh, celebrate with uh, angels and archangels and all the company of heaven as uh, the Lord Jesus defeats uh, death in the grave for you and for me. And so tonight at the conclusion of the service, you'll see uh, the stripping of the altar, which is a, a very traditional Maundy Thursday um, liturgical action. Uh, reminding us of, of where we are and uh, as we kind of walk together. So there is no uh, closing hymn, but I'll invite you to just simply stay seated and be contemplative during that time that we uh, conclude worship. Now, another feature of uh, this evening's service is that there is not an opening hymn. And with that said, I invite you to stand as we begin worship in the Lord's name and with his blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I will go to the altar of God. God Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. During this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil all that prevents us from trusting in God and loving each other. Since it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ on this night, when he instituted this blessed meal for our salvation, it is proper that we complete our Lenten discipline by diligently examining ourselves as St. Paul urges us to do. This holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin, who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. But when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us. For our benefit he became man, so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God, and to deliver us took upon himself our sin and the punishment we deserve. So that we may more confidently believe this and be strengthened in the faith and in holy living, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. It is as if he said, I became man and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, it is as if he said, I have had mercy on you by taking into myself all your iniquities. I give myself into death, shedding my blood to obtain grace and forgiveness of sins and to comfort and establish the New Testament, which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. As a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ and Christ in him and has eternal life. We also should do this in remembrance of him, showing his death, that he was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification. Giving him our most heartfelt thanks, we take up our cross and follow him. And according to his commandment, love one another as he has loved us. As our Lord on this night exemplified this love by washing his disciples' feet, so we, by our words and actions, serve one another in love. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread and drink from the one cup. For just as the one cup is filled with the wine of many grapes, and one bread made from countless grains, so also we, being many, are one body in Christ. Because of him we love one another, 
not only in word, but in deed and in truth. May the almighty and merciful God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his Holy Spirit, accomplish this in us. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins, imploring God our Father, for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Please kneel or remain seated for a time of confession. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, I the poor and sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, 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 which I have ever God be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, he will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. Please be seated.
The Old Testament reading for this evening is found in the 24th chapter of the book of Exodus. <clears throat> Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the just decrees. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken to us, we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars, according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of the oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aram, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God, ate, and drank. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson comes from the 10th chapter of the first book of Corinthians. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 14th chapter. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, where, where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where, I'm, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and say to one another after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And this is the gospel of the Lord. In response to the word of the Lord, we unite our hearts and voices with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven.
Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this evening's message, our gospel lesson, Mark chapter 14, but in particular these words, they went and prepared the Passover. So far the text. One night last week, and I can't remember which one it was, I was making dinner. Alyssa was busy with some stuff, and in this particular moment, I was chopping up some potatoes that I wanted to cook because I thought that'd go really great on the side of the sloppy joes I was making. Now, I made dinner, we sat down to eat, everything was fine, it tasted good, and I noticed something all of a sudden. I cut myself with a kitchen knife. Just a, just a little spot, it was kind of bleeding. And I don't know what it is lately, but for the past several weeks, I am cutting myself all the time with the kitchen knives. It's gotten to the point where Alyssa's trying to keep me away from the kitchen knives. And actually, I'm not doing myself any favors because she didn't really know about the Sloppy Joe night incident. Not yet. But 
it's kind of interesting. It's not a big deal. It doesn't hurt. I'm looking at it. It's, it's annoying, I suppose, but the thing about it is blood always seems to kind of bring about a feeling of alert. Blood makes us feel an urgency that no other situation does. Blood equals life, and we know that if the blood is leaking out even a little bit, there's a reason for some concern. And I think everybody, to varying degrees, has kind of an uncomfortability with the sight, the presence of blood, especially when it's your own or someone close to you. Tonight's gospel lesson is a bloody mess. Tonight's gospel lesson has blood all over it. You just didn't see it yet. I think it all starts with those words, and they went and prepared the Passover. And sure, they went just as he had said, found the man with the jar of water, the upper room all prepared. That's not what I'm talking about. And I'm not talking about who was going to make which dish or anything like that. But see, every Passover group had to personally send a representative or representatives to the temple to sacrifice the lamb there in person in the temple. Now, let's do some math real quickly. There are some estimates that say there were over 2 million, maybe as many as 2.5 million people in Jerusalem for the Passover in this particular year. And the Romans, they put a limit of about 10 on Passover gatherings. They were afraid of too many people in one place leading to some kind of uprising with so many people in town. And so, if you take two, two and a half million people, gatherings of about ten, you're talking about having to slaughter two, two, 200,000, 250,000 lambs in the temple during one day. You had to do it in person. You had to do it in front of a priest. And so, here's what it looked like. The people, the representatives of all these different Passover groups, they would line up. And so would the priests, big, long line of priests leading from the courts right to the altar. You would line up with your lamb that you probably acquired right there in the temple, and the lamb would be killed and dressed right there in person, and as the blood spilled out, the priest would try to catch it in bowls made of precious metals. And then they would pass the bowl to the next priest and to the next priest and to the next priest and dump it on the altar all day long. 200,000 lambs. Imagine the sound of this. Imagine the smell of this. Imagine the blood everywhere. They say that people were standing in blood up above their ankles to their calves sometimes in the temple all over the temple. That's how much blood there was. See, the Jewish people believed, like I think we take for granted, blood means life. And when it came to sacrifices, as the blood was spilled out of the sacrificial lamb, they believed that in that sacrifice, that just as God promised that, that the life of that lamb would be used to cleanse some of the, the death and the sin off of themselves. And what's really, really amazing about this whole vast bloody situation is that it wasn't really all that amazing. It happened exactly like this every single year on the Day of Preparation. And all the other days, there were still sacrifices going on. The temple was a bloody place. But on this day, it was everywhere. And when Jesus asks two disciples to go prepare for the Passover, I think the thing that we forget about the easiest was the hardest thing to do, and that was stand in this eternity line to go into the bloody mess and get the lamb for the Passover feast. And so when the text says, and they went and prepared the Passover, that's what it's meaning to say. 
and the blood's everywhere. They must have come out with blood-stained legs and feet and hands, and it must have just been everywhere, on their robes, on their clothes all over the place, on their skin. It must have been on everything. And so, I think it's interesting that with this much blood, with this much death, with all of this sacrifice, it, it was never enough. As many animals as died, as much sacrifice took place, as many years went by, as many visits to the temple happened, as much blood was poured on the altar, it was never enough. There was always more sin, always more sinners, always more darkness and death and pain and suffering in the world that needed to continually be atoned for, and it was never enough. And the sacrifice went on and on year after year, and new sins were atoned for, and God's Word endured, and the blood and the sacrifice was never enough and never enough until until our Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took a cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so when they sat down at dinner, Jesus announced more blood, but this blood would be enough. Our text ends with one more reference just like this. It says that when they finished their meal, when it was dark, when they were done eating, it says that they went, sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. Now, each of the Gospels kind of describes this a little bit differently, but essentially what's happening here is they're leaving their Passover feast, and they're going out to the Garden of Gethsemane, where they camped out each night. Now, another Gospel actually will tell us, Matthew tells us they went to the Garden of Gethsemane, John tells us they crossed over the Brook of Kidron, which you had to do to get to the Garden of Gethsemane. And that's the one that I think is really interesting. Because the Brook of Kidron, you had to pass over it to get from the city gates to the Garden of Gethsemane, and it was usually, most of the year, completely dry. During this time of the year, it would have had probably a little bit of water running through it. I mean, a brook is a good description for it. But what's really, really fascinating about the brook of Kidron is after all the sacrifice and all the blood in the temple on the day of preparation was concluded, they would open up these channels out of the temple and all that blood would drain into the brook of Kidron. And so for hours, the brook of Kadron ran red. That means that when the Lord Jesus instituted his holy supper and left the Passover feast to go to the Garden of Gethsemane where he would be betrayed, he had to walk over the brook of Kadron and look down and see all the blood from all the day's sacrifices, from all the Passover lambs. And when he did that, I have to believe that he thought about the fact that the blood that pumped through his own veins was about to do something that all of this blood that could run a river red could not. 
And that soon as he went to his betrayal and as his own blood was spilled, it would be enough. And that all the sin and all the suffering of all the world for all time would be atoned for, that in doing so, heaven's gates would be opened for you and for me. And so tonight, once more, he offers to you his sacrifice and his blood, and it is enough. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which certainly surpasses understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ to life eternal. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Having already consecrated the elements, we are reminded of the promise, the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand. Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you steadfast in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart in his peace and joy. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Forsaken me. Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued, in you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who seek me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust in you at my mother's breast. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far off. O oh, you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, 
praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. And stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the afflicted or the affliction, and he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn that he has done.